I assume you are already aware that you will be teaching here at the Officers Academy, correct? To start, please speak with the three house leaders. You should also take a look around the Academy and acquaint yourself with your new home. That is your first task here at the Monastery. Once you have finished, come and speak with me. May I ask a favor of you? Ha! I imagine you were a bit surprised that I recommended you as a professor here. Frankly, we had someone else in mind for the role, but they ran off during our dust-up with the bandits. Can't entrust students to someone who's abandoned them once before, huh? You saved the lives of the students you came across. That, now, you should make the rounds. Go around the monastery and see that you greet everyone. you've accepted a teaching position here. Pity. I was hoping you would lend your strength to the Empire. I never properly introduced myself, did I? My name is Edelgard von Hressfelk. I am the princess and heir apparent of the Adrestian Empire. I wonder if you'll be tasked with leading the Black Eagles. I hope you've had a chance to meet everyone. Would you like to know more about any of the Black Eagles? Hubert is the heir of Marquis Vestra. He has served me since I was a child. You may think his blood runs a bit cold, but <laughs> actually that's rather accurate. Still, if you can get past that, you'll see he's quite astute and reasonable. For some reason, he thinks of me as a bitter rival and is always trying to challenge me. It's terribly irritating. His house is that of Duke Iyer, which produces Adrestia's prime ministers. That family is... perhaps too pleased with its own status. He's remarkably intelligent, but he only wishes to apply himself to tasks that particularly interest him, and nothing else. He's also fond of, well, napping. If he had any work ethic or sense of duty to speak of, I suppose he would be destined to become an official of the Empire. He's the second son of Count Burglies. He has no inheritance in his future, which is perhaps why he's always so eager to prove himself. He's overly energetic and rushes headfirst into any battle. If he ends up in your care, be sure to keep a close eye on him. She's Count Varley's only daughter. I suppose you could say she's a bit eccentric, but she seems like a gentle soul. I believe she shut herself away in her quarters and doesn't care to leave, but don't worry. I'll make sure she finds her way to class. Few commoners have joined the Black Eagle House, but Dorothea is an exception. She's a songstress from a famous opera company in the Empire. I'm not entirely sure what brought her to the officers again. 
To the west of Fodlan is an archipelago called Brigid. Petra is the granddaughter of their king. Brigid is a vassal state of the Empire, which is how she came to be enrolled here. She's incredibly smart and studious. So, you've accepted a teaching position. I never properly introduced my... I am the... I wonder... I hope you've had a chance to meet everyone. Would you like to know more about any of the... You must be the new professor. As for me, my job is to stand here at this glorious entrance and leisurely watch over the comings and goings of everyone. Make folks smile, you know? Yeah, and by that, I mean to vigilantly guard this entrance with my very life. No levity whatsoever. As of now, nothing to report. Yes. Pardon me. Yes. What do you think? The Golden Deer House is for students of the Lester Alliance. Our house leader is heir to the Alliance's leadership, House Regan. We have plenty of other prominent nobles. be the renowned mercenary who rescued Claude. Honestly, you should not have troubled yourself over the... My name is Lawrence Hellman Gloucester. Hi. It's... So you're the skilled mercenary who saved Claude, are you? Oh, you are? It's such an honor to meet you. Ignaz Victor. My parents are Alliance merchants. And I am Lysithia von Ordelia. Please do not forget it. Hey, are you that mercenary? Everyone's been talking about you. I'm Hilda Valentine Goneril, and her name is... M Marianne Van Edmund. Are you joining the Knights of Saros or something? Well, I look forward to seeing more of you. Are you someone's guest? The dining hall's that way, if that's what you're looking for. No, Raphael. That's Captain Gerald's... Hi, I'm Leonie Pinelli, Captain Gerald's first and greatest apprentice. I'm sure he's told you about me. Nice to meet you. I'm Raphael Kirsten. Are you someone's... No, hi. Nice to... Hey. <laughs> well, well. Scored a teaching gig here, did you? I guess that means I'd better introduce myself properly. I'm from the ruling house of the Lester Alliance, but don't worry too much about all that madness. I'm guessing you don't know which class you'll be teaching yet, do you? I bet you'd like ours. We're not as difficult as the other two. Have you met the folks from the Golden Deer House yet? Care to know more about anyone? <laughs> Piqued your interest, have I? As luck would have it, I'm pretty curious about you. But what's life without a bit of mystery? Let's just spend the next year or so learning about... He's the heir of Gloucester territory. If you haven't already picked up on him, he's a bit arrogant and fancies himself a lady. That said, deep down, he's really devoted and honest. Though I wouldn't mind never hearing him talk about his noble obligations ever again. He comes from a merchant family, but his parents died in an accident. Seems like he's had a rough life. Despite all that, he's just about the most cheerful guy you'll ever meet. His passions are training, eating, and... Actually, that's about it. He's the second son of a merchant family. Since his brother will inherit the business, he's training to become a knight. If you ask me, it doesn't seem like he truly wants to be a knight. He's probably just... He's the second... If you ask... Lysithia is the daughter of Count Ordelia, and is probably the youngest student here. But watch out, she gets angry if you treat her like a child. 
As for me, I do it on purpose. You have to make... Marianne is Margrave Edmund's daughter, and that's pretty much all I know about her. She doesn't interact much with other students, so I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of folks here have never even heard her speak. Hilda is the only daughter of Duke Goneril. It seems her father and brother coddle her quite a bit. If you look up lazy in the dictionary, her picture won't be there because she never got around to submitting it. Not... Leone enrolled because she wants to be a mercenary. I think she said that her father is a hunter. She's pretty blunt and as stingy as they come. A habitual saver, too. I think she's hoping to repay her village for helping to send her here. Yeah. Okay. This classroom belongs to the Blue Lion House. Our house leader is Prince Dimitri. All of us here hail from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Hey there. Are you the mercenary who saved His Highness? It's an honor to meet you. I'm Sylvain Jose Gatier. Feel free to say hi whenever you like. Hi there. You must be the one everyone's talking about. I'm Ash. Great. This here is Dudu. He serves Prince Dimitri. I have heard that you rescued His Highness. Words cannot express my gratitude. Should you ever require my strength, please know that I will hasten to repay this debt. I have heard all about what you did from Prince Dimitri. As a citizen of Fargus, I thank you. He also said you're quite skilled. And he doesn't just say things like that. I look forward to sparring with you and beating you. Felix, must you always speak of fighting right away? Oh, and uh, you may call me Ingrid. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. And who's this? You don't look familiar at all. Do you work here at the monastery? Oh, mercy. Do you think this is that mercenary people have been talking about? Now that I think about it, that does sound like something Dimitri may have said. I suppose you'll be enrolling at the Officers' Academy too, then? Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Mercedes, and this is my best friend. I'm Annette. It's nice to meet you. Okay. Right, right. Please accept my apologies for the other day. You came to our aid, yet I hadn't even the courtesy to properly introduce myself. I am Dimitri Alexandra Blathed, Crown Prince of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Of course, at the Academy, I am simply a student. Delightful news. I still have much to learn, but I'm confident I could benefit greatly. In any case, welcome to the monastery. I hear you're investigating the different houses here. Did any of the Blue Lions catch your attention? Me? Oh, um... Please, forgive me. It's difficult to open up on the spot, don't you think? I'm afraid my story has not been a pleasant one. I do hope that doesn't color your view of me, but I understand if that can't be helped. Hello? Dudu was born in Dusker, and has been loyally working in my service for the past four years. He's rather taciturn, but once you get to know him, you'll see he's a kind and good-natured young man. Felix is the heir to House Fraldarius. He has a bit of a sharp tongue, but don't let that fool you. Deep down, he's a good guy. He gravitates toward people who are skilled. Perhaps you would enjoy a friendly competition with him sometime. He's the adoptive son of Lord Lenato of Castle Gaspar, but I hear he was born a commoner. He has an extremely earnest personality, so I'm certain he will approach your lectures with great enthusiasm. Sylvain is the heir to House Gautier. He is a capable person who highly values his friends. That said, well, he's always been a bit of a... <clears throat> skirt chaser, so to speak. Pardon my bluntness. I speak with him about it often, but it doesn't seem to help. 
I hear she was born to imperial nobility, but a twist of fate brought her to the kingdom. She may seem carefree on the surface, but she's actually a kind soul who pays careful attention to everyone around her. Annette is Baron Dominic's niece. She is a talented student who scored extremely high marks at the Royal School of Sorcery. She's cheerful and hardworking. Brilliant, really. Though, she can be a bit oblivious at times. I hear she caused an explosion in the kitchen last night. Ingrid is Count Galatea's daughter. She is also a childhood friend of Felix, Sylvain, and my... She is diligent, industrious, and principled. In truth, she is more knightly than most knights you will ever meet. I appreciate your effort. Hey! This is the classroom of the Black Eagle House, which is for students from the Adrestian Empire. Our house leader is Princess Edelgard. There are many other nobles among our ranks as well. Bernadetta, this is no stranger. Our house leader owes this person a great debt. Is that not right? I am Ferdinand von Eyer, legitimate son of the Eyer family, the Empire's foremost house. Are you going to join? <laughs> Bernard, I am. Are you going? Well, aren't you just lovely? Is this your first time in the monastery? Shall I show you around? Oh, my name is Dorothea. Before I joined the Academy, I was a member of an opera company in the Empire. You should hear me sing sometime. Whoa. Is it true that you saved Edelgard? That's incredible. The name's Caspar, by the way. Pleased to meet you. Linhard. Goodbye. Yeesh, Linhard. How'd you get into the Academy with those manners? So, are you a student here too? Maybe we'll be in the same class. Thank you. I am Hubert. A humble servant of Lady Edelgard. I heard you came to the aid of Her Highness. You have my most sincere thanks. This is Petra. She has come all the way from Brigid to... Back on her archipelago, she is actually a princess. In Fodlin terms, she would be called heir. Hello. I am called Petra. I am pleased... I teach here, weapon instruction. Yes. A moment, please. Busy, so could you please move along now? Okay now, what else did Lady Rhea need doing today? What happened? Here I am again, the office of the Captain of the Knights. That said, I'm merely here to assist. Apparently, the current captain is getting on in years. I hear the captain has a hard time keeping up with the responsibilities of the job. Ah, <sighs> that's where I come in.
This is my research laboratory. I've worked hard to furnish it with the rare materials and purpose-built equipment required for my work. Hey. Oh, Professor. Dropping by so soon? Well, you're here now. And I do like a man who knows what he wants. L huh. That welcome didn't phase you at all, did it? What's the matter? Don't you like me? Or are you just so innocent you don't understand me? Welcome to the library. Here you may find literate. I am Tomas, the librarian. If you have need of me, do not hesitate to ask. I have worked here for... Uh, hmm, uh, I, I have... your time at the Academy thus far. I hope you have found our halls brimming with the vitality of well-intentioned souls. Hmm. I suppose it is time for you to take charge of one of our three houses of students. I must note that I am personally against entrusting someone as lacking in trackable history as yourself with such a task. But it is as the Archbishop desires. The Black Eagles, the Blue Lions, and the Golden Deer. All so different. I hope you've made it a point to get to know each of them. Since you are new here, we have decided to allow you first pick. Manuela and I will take charge of... So you have chosen the Black Eagles led by Edelgard, correct? Your heart has made its choice, then. All I ask is that you guide these open minds with virtue, care, and sincerity. They are all promising youths who bear the weight of Vodlin's future upon their shoulders. I hope you appreciate what an honor it is to lead them. Brother? Oh, I am so sincerely sorry. I did not mean to interrupt. I am in the middle of something, Flame. Is it urgent? No, no, it's nothing. More importantly, who is this? This is our newest professor at the Academy. Oh my! A new addition to the Officer's Academy! I am so very pleased to meet you, Professor. I am Sedith's little sister, Flame. I am so happy to make your acquaintance. Let us focus on the topic at hand. There is something you should be aware of. In a few days' time, there will be a mock battle between the three houses, intended to gauge the current progress of the students. We will be using this battle as an opportunity to ascertain your own abilities as well. Please do not disappoint the Archbishop. That is all. Wait, so our new professor is you? I didn't see that one coming. Easy, Caspar. Aren't you being a bit rude? You know it's a waste of time to expect politeness from him. It will be a pleasure learning from you, Professor. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to take a nap. <laughs> don't look at me like that! Oh, and please don't talk to me too much either. <sighs> I'm sorry for the chaos you've walked into. I hear we are rather close in age, Professor. I hope you do not mind if we treat you like one of us. In our class, we try to treat each other as equals, despite any differences in age or status. Personally, I would love to include you in that inner circle. You have a gut, Professor. 
I will take great joy from your teachings. Petra, I believe you mean to say that our professor has guts. That's a bit different from having a gut. You can't go around saying someone so slim and attractive has a gut. Oh, uh, please take my apologies. I have not yet mastered this language. Professor, I want you to know that it's perfectly acceptable for you to treat me as you do the others. I may be the Imperial Princess, but here at the Academy, I'm just another student. That said, know that I have high expectations of you, and high hopes, but I'm certain you can lead the Black Eagle House to greatness. Sure, sure. Now let's break the ice with a training session. I want to see our new teacher in action. Why will the ice be broken? Is this a custom I have missed in my studies? Not real ice, just the ice of... Um, well, it just means let's get to know each other. I don't want to train. Let's stay in the classroom and learn from a book. Let's all calm down and have a nice cup of tea, how about? Doesn't that sound lovely, Professor? I know we all agreed to treat each other as equals, but there is a limit to what I can tolerate. The esteemed Black Eagle House requires order. <laughs> Looks like your first job will be to quiet down this racket. I don't envy you. Uh, they're not normally this... rowdy. I do hope you can manage, Professor. Say, while you're here, I'd like to use this device I designed to determine whether the power of a crest resides within you. Won't hurt a bit. Promise. You don't know about crests? Well, allow me to tell you everything, absolutely everything, about them. Is your calendar clear? This will take a while. Crests are a fascinating topic. But before one can dive deeply into said topic, one must first understand what crests are. They are power incarnate. They are said to have been bestowed upon humans by the goddess countless ages ago. They exist within the flesh and are passed down through bloodlines. Those who carry crests may excel at magic, display exceptional strength, or any number of boons. Each crest has its own power, the nature of which is beyond mortal understanding. For now. I suspect as much, yes. But we won't know for sure unless I look into the matter. As I said, crests are passed down through the blood. However, just because someone carries a crest does not necessarily mean their descendants will inherit it as well. Only a scarce few descendants of a crest's bloodline end up inheriting that crest's power. Perhaps one of your ancestors bore a crest, and you just happened to inherit it. That is how a crest usually presents itself, after all. Yes, of course. I'll get to the bottom of it straight away. Now then. Please go ahead and hold out your arm over this device here. What is this? A pattern I've never seen before. Is it possible an as yet undiscovered crest has been detected? To think, there are still crests out there that even I am unaware of. How thrilling! <clears throat> Pardon my unrestrained jubilation. I have much to consider. You may leave now. I have more research to do in regard to this crest. Yes, so very much more research. But for now, your work here is done. Hmm, what could this line here be indicating? 
Perhaps it represents a lack of symmetry. Or perhaps... What in the world? Oh, I see. It may be connected to that, but to a greater degree than usual. Moon, professors of the Officers Academy receive a schedule for the month ahead. It notes the days on which events and missions will take place that month. Pay careful attention to your schedule so that you may thoughtfully plan what you intend to do each month and when.
myself. These are the students' quarters. To better help you supervise them, you also have a room here. Your room is here at the end. Commoner students also reside on the first floor, while the second is primarily for students of noble birth. As a rule, we try to avoid discrimination based on social status here, but the nobility can be quite insistent when it comes to matters of propriety. Speaking of, it would be best for you to avoid improper conduct. I expect you to set a good example for the students. Okay. I'm not too keen on the professor of my class. I really hope to focus more on strategy. Hmm. Maybe I should talk to my professor about transferring to a different... Yes. I heard about the upcoming mock battle. I want you to know, Professor, that I do not intend to lose. I hereby declare my intention to prevail at... Goodness, listen to me. The thrill of competition has carried me away. Let me know when you are hungry. I will make you a quality meal, as thanks for your service to his... I have a request. the dignity of the Empire rests on the results of the mock battle. That's an overstate still. We must do our best to prevent- You should take the time to learn each student's abilities. Perhaps some extra lesson? You look as if you have no idea what's going on here. I know my way around, so I'm happy to help you find your footing. The monastery has some exceptional facilities that everyone who lives at the Officer's Academy is welcome to make use of. For example, you can enjoy a meal with your students at the dining hall, or take part in some one-on-one -on -one sparring at the training grounds. I suggest visiting the various facilities whenever you have the time to spare. It's a great way to get to know the students, faculty, and various workers here. Have you noticed the bulletin boards placed around the monastery? Those contain requests people have posted, as well as helpful information from the market if you prove yourself by helping people with their requests, certain facilities here will become available for your use. The bulletin board is updated frequently, so I suggest checking it at least once a month. You should take your time when speaking with everyone, but when it comes to using the facilities, well, you need to be more careful about that. If you use them without planning ahead, your free time will be gone before you know it. A great deal is expected from professors of the Officers' Academy. To put it plainly, you'll need to keep expanding your knowledge of all disciplines, not just battle. Dimitri and Claude are the leaders of the other two houses. Do not underestimate. When we take the field, it would be best not to engage the both of them at once. Listen to this. Wow, Yuritsa sure seems strong. I kind of thought he was going to be the new professor assigned to our class. After that teacher ran away during our outdoor training, I figured Yuritsa was a natural replacement. I was surprised when you were suddenly appointed professor instead. I don't think I could hold my own against Yuritsa in battle. I could probably take you, though. You really think so? With enough training, I'm sure I'll beat you some. I care nothing of friendship. If you have no business here... Listen to this. Professor! Hello! tell you the provenance of our class name. The Eagle. That refers to the twin-headed eagle on the Adrestian Empire's coat of arms. 
And black is the traditional color of the Empire's armor, hence black eagles.